Let's face it, sounds in a keyboard are important. However, something that is often overlooked is how intuitive a keyboard's operating system is. If a keyboard is quote unquote hard to use, difficult to navigate, or just to get your mind around it takes a degree, you will most likely have a disappointing experience. What good are features if accessing them is so difficult it takes you out of your creative space? Today, we will be looking at some of the basic workflow features of the Yamaha Modi X to determine just how easy or not so easy it is to use when you're actually in the cockpit of this powerful machine. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Derek. If you are new around here, it's good to meet you. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And today we're going to be talking about the navigation of the Modi X. Is the Modi X easy to use? And so I want to talk about the workflow and so on and so forth with this keyboard. I do want to say right off the bat that this is going to be more of a talking video, less of a playing video. I do have another video up. Um, it's the, it's a sound comparison between the Modi X and the uh, Roland FA08. If you want to just kind of hear the Modi X. then that video would probably be more suitable for you. And of course, there are thousands of videos where people are playing the Modi X or the Yamaha Montage, um, same sounds. Uh, they're playing them and you can hear those sounds. But this is an informational video and we're going to be talking about the workflow of this particular keyboard. And if you like in-depth videos about keyboards and stuff like that, uh, definitely consider liking and subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon so that uh, you get a notification because I'm always uploading new stuff so let's get into it i do love i do love this keyboard um most certainly um but when we start talking about keyboards i think now this is purely an opinion i think that sometimes people are focused a little bit too much on just the sounds uh, sounds are very important because ultimately that's what we're trying to produce is we're trying to produce a sound. But when you really buy a keyboard and start working with the keyboard, one of the things that becomes very important is the way it works and its workflow, how easy it is to navigate, so on and so forth. Does it have a touch screen? Does it not have a touch screen? Do you like a touch screen? Do you not like a touch screen? Buttons and all those kinds of things. How easy is it to get up and running and get these things going? Because I tell you something that is completely uh, hard to use and not necessarily hard, but something that is not intuitive. Uh, this keyboard can be um, very, I don't want to say hard, but because the keyboard is so deep, it's very complex and there's a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, but at the same time, once you kind of understand the architecture, the workflow and so on and so forth, you understand that it's intuitive and you're able to use it. And even things that are, you know, complex features are oftentimes easy to employ. Um, but let's talk about the Modi X here. Let's, let's go into it. So when you open it up, when you first turn it on, you're going to be in a live set mode. And a live set mode is made up of 16 different uh, performances. Now, a performance contains all of your sounds and stuff like that. Uh, so this is a performance. I can turn the super knob. Right, uh, but I can click on another um, performance. And so what this mode does is it gives you access to uh, various programs and stuff like that really, really quickly. And you can, you know, set up your own live sets. Hit a rhythm track here. Let's go. So um, pretty easy to navigate there. So live sets, it just gives you 16 different um, programs or 16 different performances that you have access to right on the fly.
So excellent for live playing because you can switch through programs. I keep calling them programs, but really they're performances. You can switch through them very, very quickly. So um, this is your live set mode. But what I want to really get into is the actual performance mode. So let's go back to the sound here and hit performance, which is basically your home. And now this is your performance mode. So we can see that this performance is actually made up of two parts. Uh, you have your acoustic piano and you have your FM piano. And that's why when you turn the super knob, what's happening is the volume on the acoustic piano is going down and the volume on the FM piano is going up. So I can go all the way over and now you hear all, is, all you hear is FM. I can be somewhere in the middle and you hear a mixture of the two of them or it can be all the way to the left. And now all you're hearing is the is the acoustic piano and go into category search here and this gives me this pulls up all of my various uh, performances which they're called that's what it's called and I can click on various um, different menus and so I can do like a category search like I did hit category here hit category search and um, I can come here and select this one see what it sounds like I can click on the concert grand. It's all organized, so I can do a program. I can do my programs here, and let's see, go to keyboard, and now I have electric pianos, uh, you got your organs, guitars, so on and so forth. So you have various, uh, various uh, different categories that you can uh, pull up. Now, if I wanted to just search for something, I can hit this search icon here and I can type in, let's see, uh, acoustic and hit done. And everything with the word acoustic in it is going to come up, whether it be my pianos, uh, keyboards, organs, guitars, bass, whatever I want to do. If the word acoustic will show up, if it shows up in any of the sounds, it will it will show up here. So um, anyway, that's uh, something else we can do in order to navigate. Now, something I do want to show you that is kind of important, especially when it comes to layering sounds and whatnot, is let's go back to my category search. And um, well, I'm going to go to live set. And we're just going to pick this one. Hit enter. And okay, perfect. So the Modex has different attributes that you can look at. So I just clicked on the one that says attribute here, clicked on the touch screen, and uh, we're not gonna go over all of these. The Modex does have two sound engines, it has the AWM2 sound engine, and it has the FMX sound engine. So it has two sound engines. The FMX sound engine is, sound engine is an FM sound engine, and the AWM2 sound engine is a sample-based sound engine. Um, so I can actually click on AWM2, and now in my search here, everything oops, everything that's going to come up is going to be out of the AWM2 sound engine. If I go in the attributes and I click on the FMX, right? Now everything that comes up in my search is going to be based out of the, um, it's going to be based out of the FMX sound engine and they are separate. So in the, uh, FM sound engine, you get uh, 64 voice polyphony, and in the AWM2 sound engine, you get 128 voice polyphony. Um, now, if you have a montage, you get 128 and 128 in, in both of them. So anyway, they're separate sound engines. 
So if you're looking to preserve polyphony, um, sometimes if you're layering sounds together, try picking something that's FM and something that is AWM2, and that's gonna you know not put so much strain on either one of these sound engines, and you won't get uh, voice cutouts and so on and so forth. But this is what I wanted to show you in the attributes. Now you have the ability to pick single part sounds or multi part sounds. So um, or multi part performances. So this is a single. I'm in the category of single part. Now everything that comes up now. Is a single part performance. So if I hit enter, right, I can see that there's only one sound here. I have one through eight channels uh, or one through eight uh, parts that I can use. And this only takes up one part. That's what makes it a single part performance. OK, now if I go back into my category search, I can go here to my category search and go to my attributes and I can go to multi. And now all of a sudden. Everything I click on is going to be a multi part. A multi part performance of some sort. So let's go here. Let's go back into my category search, my regular category search, and I'm going to click on this. Now let's do this one. Perfect. I hit enter and now I can see that I have two different parts. I have a piano part on number one and I have a pad part on number two because this is a multi-part performance. So let's go back to here. Let's go back to my category search. Now I'm going to change this to all. Now the Modi X has it color coded. So any part that you see, any performance that you see, um, that's in the color blue is going to be a multi-part performance. Anything that's in the color green is going to be a single part performance. So you can tell at a glance, you can use my jog wheel or I can use these buttons here to navigate the, the menus. You can tell at a glance, you can say, hey, this one is green. That means it's a single part performance. If I hit enter, it's only going to be one part. Um, go back to my category search. Now if I click on something that's going to be a blue one, let's do the bridge, hit enter. This is actually made up of three different parts to make this one performance. Okay, so a mistake that a lot of people, I don't know if you necessarily can call it a mistake, but uh, one of the things that a lot of people do is they will pick something like the CFX Concert Grand, which is also a multi-part performance. I know it only sounds like one sound, but in order to make this grand piano, it takes a multiplicity of parts. So this takes four parts So what people do oftentimes when they want to layer sounds, they have something like this that takes up four parts and then they're going to pick another sound that takes up four parts and then they're wondering why, hey, how come I can't really lay a bunch of layer a bunch of sounds and stuff together? Or how come I'm getting a bunch of voice dropouts and stuff like that as far as my polyphony? Um, well, that's because that's because when you are looking through your categories here, you are looking at performances. You are not looking at um parts necessarily now these the green ones are single part but the blue ones are multi-part and there are some multi-part performances that will take up all eight of your channels that you have to use like this one here specifically uses channels one through six So so when I am actually building layers or building, uh, I'm going to build some layers of my own. Just a quick tip. I am typically using single parts because the single parts are uh, better for layering and stuff like that because you um, you just have more 
uh, more at your disposal. A lot of these sounds that are multi-part sounds, they're made to play by themselves, not necessarily made to do a whole bunch of complex layering and stuff like that. Now I still do have, you know, two available parts left in this performance that I can add some other sounds and so on and so forth. All right, so let's go back into my category search here. I'm going to go into my attributes and I'm going to click on single so I can pull up all of my single part performances, hit enter, and I'm going to choose the CFX Pop Studio Grand. I'm going to hit enter and now that's just a single part performance. So it's just one and I have two through eight that I can also add. If I want to do a layer, simply click here, hit the add or hit the uh, hit this plus button here because all these are empty so I can hit this on the touch screen and now I can bring up my own another sound here so I'm going to use a let's say hmm, ah, let's go here. add that so now my part um, now my performance my CFX pop studio grand I can always change the name has two different parts in it the first part is going to be the piano part, and the second part is going to be that uh, pad that I just chose. And I can adjust the volume using my sliders over here. If I wanted to add another part uh, to the layer, uh, let's say I want to do a string, I should just hit the plus and go to my other strings here, ballad strings, hit enter, and now I've got strings. And the strings are on part number three, and I can adjust the volume using the slider. Got my pad here, and my piano. So uh, that's how you do layers in this uh, keyboard. So I can come over here and let's just hit delete, select it. Yes, I do want to delete it. Select the pad, delete it, hit delete. Yes, I do want to delete it. Now I'm back to my single part performance. So let's do a split now. So a split is basically a layer that you select, you select your different um, keyboard um, your key limits so I'm gonna hit the plus here and we're going to choose a base I'm going to go into my category and choose base uh, subcategory I'm going to choose electric base now remember all of my attributes are set to single so everything that's coming up is going to be in green these are all single part uh, performances so I don't have to worry about the base being made up of multiple parts uh, let's choose this one and then hit enter now I have a base Now, of course, I don't want the bass over top of the entire uh, keyboard. So what I'm going to do is with the bass part selected, click it, and then I'm going to hit edit over here. And when the edit comes up, now I can set my note limit. So I'm going to be adjusting the bottom note. So I'm going to come over here to note limit and hit where the bottom note is and click on keyboard. So all I have to do is hit the key that I want to be the bottom note. Oh, well, I'm doing the bass. I'm going to do the top note. So I'm going to do this one here, hit the keyboard, and uh, we're going to set that to this. Now it's set to C3. Um, enter, exit, go back to my performance and now the bass is on the bottom, but when I come up top, no more bass. Now, of course, I can do the same thing here with the keyboard, uh, with the piano rather, hit edit, 
I just selected it, hit edit, and I'm going to adjust the bottom note for this one. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to hit keyboard. So all I have to do is hit the key, hit enter, and I come back out to my performance. Now it's just the bass on the bottom. So now I have my bass on the bottom and my piano on the top. So uh, that's nice. All you have to do is click here and hit edit. And that's where you find those. Uh, that's where you find those parameters. Now I'm actually on my bass part here. Now, if I don't want the bass to be able to play two notes, it once I can also adjust that. So I click on my base part. I'm going to hit edit. And in my general uh, parameters here, I can come over here where it says mono or poly. I can change it to mono. And now only one note will play at a time. So now only one note will play at a time in this because I adjusted it here. If I change it to here like this to poly, now you can play more than one note at a time. So uh, that's just, so that's how you set up your layers and that's how you set up your splits. All right, perfect. So let's get out of here. Let's go back into my performance. Uh, we'll go to a live set. No, category search. And uh, yeah, pick this one maybe. Hit insert, perfect. So now I have a single part performance. Now if I wanted to add a a rhythm pattern to this, I can just hit this rhythm pattern button. Um, select the drum kit that I want, and here we are. We're off to races. So now I've got my rhythm pattern, but I can uh, select, um, let's see, the tempo over here. Take the tempo up or down. Let's go. Volume up or down. And I can select, you know, the actual pattern itself. But before I do that, I uh, just want to show you that you can select different patterns. So I just, uh, you got eight different patterns here that are already set up. So first one is my number one. Um, if I click on number two, it's a different pattern. Three.
All right, so you got various patterns and stuff there. Now I can actually adjust these patterns and whatnot. So let's just hit enter. And uh, let's go ahead and get out of here and select this one. And I'm going to hit edit. And the drum track is actually in the arpeggiator. So I'm going to come down here and hit arpeggio. And then I select individual and now I can change parts one through eight to whatever I want to. So uh, right now the drum pattern is set uh, to this for number two. But I can come over here and select it and hit category search. And now I can change it to uh, say this one. Enter. And now my number one is this one. And my number two is this one. Now, in order to navigate these various patterns, I don't really like using the touchscreen. Um, it's fine when you're just kind of editing and figuring some things out, but for, for performance, that's when I like to use my actual scenes. So I got scenes one through eight right here. Um, I got four knobs, one, two, four buttons, one, two, three, four. If I toggle this, now I'm through five, six, seven, and eight. So um, you actually have eight scenes and these eight scenes can literally correspond with these eight different patterns. So what I'm going to do is select number one. I'm going to turn on my drum pattern. Now I'm going to store this as a scene. So I hit shift and I hit store. And now this is scene number one. It's that simple. A scene basically takes a snapshot of everything in your keyboard as it is right now and sets up those parameters. And then all you have to do is click on and click on the scene and it will restore everything back to what your keyboard was like at that particular time when you stored the scene. So I'm going to select number two now here, this pattern. All right, so I like that one. I'm going to hit shift and store under number two. Now it says scene stored. So now if I hit scene number one, number So uh, that's nice. Uh, you can just hit the scene and boom, you're, and you don't just have to use that for drum patterns, but you can recall any kind of parameters that you have set up in your keyboard. You can just recall them just by hitting those scene buttons. So that's uh, pretty convenient. Uh, maybe you notice me hitting this octave button here. Um, the octave button is right there. So I can go down or I can go up and adjust it. And for those of you who uh, use the transpose, you simply hit shift and now hit shift and hold it down, hit shift, hold it down, hit shift, hold it down. If I hit shift and hold both of them, it goes back to zero. So you have your transpose and your octave buttons. right there. So uh, I know a lot of people talk about uh, people using the transpose. Um, like, hey, learn to play your instrument. Don't use the transpose button ever. 
And I guess there's a lot of truth to that. Um, but if professionals weren't using the transpose, it wouldn't be on all the professional keyboards. So I'm just saying a lot of professionals are definitely using transpose. Comes in handy certain times. But anyway, to each their own. Let's uh, let's keep moving on here. So let me go back into my category search, and I'm just going to pick a another sound, a single part performance. Now, if I want to adjust the um, actual effects on this, I can just click on the instrument that I want, hit edit, and come down here into the menu where it says effects. And uh, I'm gonna go to, um, right now I'm in routing, and I can go to A or B. So each part in a performance in the Modi X, you have two insert effects that you can employ. So my first insert effect right now is set to a damper resonance, but if I want to, I could to actually change that. Uh, let's see, I can change it to, let's go to reverb. Uh, let's go to hall reverb, we'll say okay. I'm gonna increase the time of the reverb here. And so I can adjust the various parameters of the reverb. Or I could pick a different uh, effect all together. Let's pick something that we don't really put on a piano. Hey, flanger. Perfect. Hit enter. And it's just a whole lot of effects that you can uh, navigate. So my second uh, insert effect, my B, insert B, is another insert effect. And right now it's on an EQ, but I can pick uh, anything here. Uh, so you got your flangers, you got reverb, delay, chorus, flanger, phase, distortion, compression. Uh, let's use a multi brand compressor. And just that. So this is where your effects are. You can add two different insert effects to your um, specific uh, to your specific parts but also you can add effects to your actual the entire performance and the way you do that is rather than being selected on a part and hitting edit like this to to um, select your you know effects and your EQ and stuff per part you can come up here click up here and hit edits. So now you're not on a part, but now you're on the entire performance. Now where that really comes in handy is if I go to here, excuse me, to my category search, uh, and we're going to, rather than doing singles, we're gonna do all, hit enter, and I'm gonna pick something that has multiple parts. Hit enter, uh, hit view, because I changed my view by accident. So let's just talk about that really quickly since I've changed the view by accident. If you hit this view button, uh, it actually shows you um, all of your, all the channels that you have access to. You actually do have nine through 12 and 13 through 16 as well, but they can't be played from the keyboard. They would have to be triggered by some sort of external source or triggered just kind of via MIDI, uh, but you couldn't play them, actually play them from the, from the key bed. So you do have 16 different parts in every single performance, but only eight of them can be played from the key bed. And you can see those different parts here and assign different parts by using, uh, by using these over here. So I could select here and it's like, I could select something and I could put something in parts number 16 um, if I wanted to, uh, but I wouldn't be able to play it from the key bed. I can only play parts one through eight from the key bed. All right, let's go back to my regular classic view here so this particular performance has six different parts to make up this it has a cfx grand piano which takes up four parts and then it has two different fm um, pads and that's where we're getting this part from the sound. All right, so if I wanted to, uh, you know, um, edit a particular 
edit the effects, right? And I wanted to edit the effects of the entire thing. That's where I have to be actually clicked on, uh, actually, I have to actually select this up here and then hit edit. And now, I'm actually looking at, you know, the master effects and the reverb sins. Reverb sin parameters. So, and, um, and the master EQ, because it's going to go over the entire performance. If I come in here and just hit this here and then hit edit, when I choose a particular, um, Let's say I'm going to come in here right now. It's on a compressor, but I let's say I'm going to change this to a flanger. Hit enter, right? So the flanger is only affecting this one part. I can hit solo. It's only affecting that one part. If I come over here and hit the pad, there's no flanger on the pad because it's just an insert effect that affects this one part. If I want something that's going to affect the total performance, that's when you click up here and you hit edit. So that's uh, basically how you do your um, your effects and there's tons of different effects that you can choose. But if you're you know just talking about the basic navigation of it, it's um, very easy just to choose effects uh, really quickly and and you're off to the races. Um, now let's go really quickly. Let's go back to my live set. It's gonna click here. This is for for live playing, basically. So you can pull up your various performances really, really quickly, and you can set up your own. So right now I'm in the presets uh, menu, and uh, by clicking this down arrow, you can navigate through the various live sets that they already have set up in the in the Modi X you know so I want to choose something with motion control so the name of this live set is called motion control so everything underneath this live set is going to have some sort of motion control parameters on it Pretty cool, but you can set up your own as well. So I can go to user two. And now I have this live set. Let's get rid of this real quick. <laughs> Just kind of ringing out. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's go to a trusty piano here. So we're gonna take this piano and I'm gonna hit enter right and then I can assign let's see we're going to assign a pad but I'm going to do a single part pad so I'm going to go to single show me my single parts and I'm going to go to my pads here and we're going to choose that's good hit enter now I got So now we got that, we got this two part. Now let's say I would actually wanted to store this. All I have to do is hit store. This is what I didn't do last time. And I'm gonna save it as a new performance, right? And I can name it whatever I want to. I'm gonna call this piano, choose piano, bell, pad. So I'm gonna save it for performance. Hit done, and now it's saved. Now it's saved. Now I can go into my live set here, and now I can hit edit, and I can add it. I can change the color, and let's say I wanna do blue, and then uh, hit done. And so now I have this perform this live performance and I have this. And you could do 16 of them.
So you can literally, when I'm playing live, I can have 16 songs ready to go um, or 16 parts of songs or however I want it uh, right on uh, one screen. So it's like the kind of like the set list mode in the uh, core Kronos. Um, I can come in here, let's say you do edit. I can hit delete, delete, and now they're gone. So it's as simple as that. If I want to add something, here it is. I can set its volume right here. copy it I can say copy and then when I hit the next one now it's copied into the next ne next slot so I can copy performances and stuff like that and then just hit done and now I've got these two but of course they're exactly the same if I want to switch go to my category search all right perfect so uh, that those are your live basically how you set up your live sets so um, I hope this video was helpful I just wanted to show you that the Modiex is actually fairly easy to navigate um, and fairly easy to get up and running. Now, of course, there are a lot of deeper parameters and stuff that you can get into, but as far as just um, picking sounds, setting up layers, splits, having a rhythm pattern, um, saving your scenes, adjusting the effects and doing live sets, which is actually a lot of functionality. You can do a lot with just what I showed you and just what I uh, just what I um, demonstrated today. Uh, the Modex is actually very, um, it's actually pretty easy to navigate once you get into it. Of course, it's a lot of menu diving. You can't have knob per function on something like this because there's just so many functions. The knobs on the keyboard would be endless. It is a, it is a performance synth and it's, you know, it's really designed around, you know, sound designing and having a lot of sounds and doing things like that. So I just wanted to show you, yes, the Modex does have a nice, in my opinion, has a really nice workflow it's laid out very nice i can get to sounds and stuff that i want when i'm looking for something specifically I have these categories and stuff here I have the live sets and stuff that i can go to and just click on uh, what i want for you know live performances i can go into this mode if i want to layer something just add you know something really really easily like that and hit uh, enter and And I've got a layer. Do another one. Add something else. Uh, what are we going to do here? Marimba. Hit enter. I mean, that's literally how easy it is. And then I've got my... And then I've got my uh, controllers. My sliders over here to control the volumes. So in actual practice, it's actually very fast. You know, pick something else. Hit enter. Now I've got four. Anyway, that is it. Uh, thank you for sticking, sticking with me this long and watching this video. Please consider liking and subscribing if, you, if you're liking the content. And uh, thank you so much for watching once again. And you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you on the next video.